Welcome to Quality Improvement, Decision Support and Quality Improvement. This is Lecture B. This unit is designed to provide you with a deeper understanding of the role of alerts and clinical reminders, their benefits, and potential hazards. The objective for Decision Support and Quality Improvement is to analyze the benefits and shortfalls of alerts and clinical reminders. While decision support in the form of alerts and reminders has the potential to improve patient safety, reality is that according to the current literature, these alerts are overridden by clinicians 49% to 96% of the time. This is a real concern for HIT professionals. One of the main reasons given for overriding alerts is perceived lack of relevance. The so-called nuisance alerts provide little perceived benefit to the prescriber at the time of the alert. This causes great frustration on the part of clinicians and leads to a phenomenon called alert fatigue. Alert fatigue can result in the clinician systematically bypassing the alert, either consciously or subconsciously. The potential for missing a clinically important alert is high. There are four types of responses identified with respect to clinicians and clinical reminders. Compliance is the tendency to perform an action when a warning system instructs the user to perform a corrective or preventive action, such as checking a hospitalized patient's status when a clinical monitor issues an alert in the EHR. Reliance, on the other hand, is the tendency to refrain from performing an action when the warning system does not indicate that it is necessary. For example, Assuming that the patient's status is normal, and thus not checking the patient when the monitor does not generate an alert in the electronic health record. Two additional types of responses include spillover and reactants. Spillover can occur when there is a spread of responses merely due to increased awareness of the need for an action, even when the clinician is not prompted by the reminder system. For example, Zanetti's research team found that reminders for intraoperative drugs increased redosing even in a control group that did not receive these reminders, and concluded that this spillover occurred because of increased awareness to the importance of redosing. Reactance is the tendency for clinicians to experience a threat to their autonomy or freedom of choice in the presence of these systems. The clinician may consciously or unconsciously react by either ignoring the reminders or choosing a different course of action, trying to regain their sense of freedom and autonomy. For the purpose of this discussion, we will look at experience with four types of alerts or reminders, drug alerts, lab test alerts, practice reminders, and administrative reminders. Cooperman and colleagues identify four types of basic drug alerts. Drug allergy warnings are generated on ordering a drug to which the patient has a documented drug allergy. Drug-to-drug -drug interactions are generated when the mode of action of one drug is known to be affected by simultaneously prescribing a second drug. Duplicate medication or therapeutic duplication alerts are generated when the patient is already receiving the medication just ordered or a different drug in the same therapeutic category. Basic Medication Order Guidance is an alert that provides dosing information with default dosing being the most appropriate initial dosing. There are eight identified types of advanced drug alerts. Drug lab alerts are generated when drug administration requires close monitoring of laboratory results before and or after administration of the drug. Drug condition interactions are generated to raise awareness of specific prescribing for particular clinical conditions. Drug disease contraindication alerts are generated to warn against prescribing a certain drug in a specific disease or condition. Drug condition alerts aimed at appropriate prescribing are generated to encourage prescribing a certain drug in a specific clinical condition. Drug age alerts are generated to discourage prescribing of a certain drug in the elderly or in children. 
Drug formulary alerts are generated to notify the prescriber that a particular brand or drug is neither included nor recommended in the formulary at the prescribing location. Dosing guidelines are alerts that take into account complex patient characteristics such as age, renal liver function, pregnancy of female of childbearing potential, pediatric weight-based dosing, drug utilization restrictions, or clinical indication. Finally, complex prescribing alerts are generated with combined features of basic and advanced alerts. Angela Schlettelbauer and her colleagues performed a systematic review of the evidence that supports use of computerized alerts and prompts to improve drug prescribing behaviors. Most of the studies reviewed showed positive benefits. In fact, 23 of 27 drug alert types that were identified demonstrated benefits in terms of improving prescriber behavior and reducing error rates. These researchers found that the greatest potential for benefit was with drug-to-drug -drug interaction and drug disease contraindication alerts and age-related dosing guidelines. Shaw and colleagues wanted to find a way to improve clinician acceptance of drug alerts in ambulatory care settings. They designed a selective set of drug alerts using a criticality leveling systems. Level 1 alerts were the most critical, and a clinician could not proceed with the prescription without eliminating the contraindication. Level 2 alerts were very important, but the clinician could proceed if he or she provided a reason for overriding the alert. Level 3 alerts were designed to not disrupt workflow, but to provide important information for the clinician to take into consideration. Through this research, Shaw's team was able to demonstrate that by designating only critical to high severity alerts to be interruptive of clinician workflow, they were able to minimize workflow disruptions and improve clinician acceptance of drug alerts. Basic laboratory alerts include drug lab alerts, which, as stated previously, are generated when drug administration requires close monitoring of laboratory results before and or after administration. Duplicate laboratory testing alerts are generated when the patient has already had the lab test ordered. Basic laboratory test order guidance is an alert that provides ordering information with respect to the particular lab test being ordered. Finally, Alerts can be generated to notify clinicians of public health alerts so that they can initiate appropriate laboratory testing during local disease outbreaks. French researchers recently examined the impact of a serology clinical decision support system providing point-of-care reminders of previous existing blood test results. These reminders were embedded in a CPOE at a university teaching hospital. The CDSS was implemented in the cardiovascular surgery department of that hospital in order to decrease inappropriate repetitions of viral serology tests, specifically hepatitis B virus. The researchers found that the proportion of unnecessarily repeated tests immediately dropped after implementation of the alert and remained stable over time. In a recent article, Nace and colleagues discussed features of the alert that enhanced its success. Quote, the alert was automatically prompted and was part of clinician workflow. The user could not deactivate the alert output. The most recent laboratory result for viral serology tests and its date was automatically retrieved from the patient's electronic health record. And the alert was displayed at the time and location of decision making, that is, before the user ordered an unnecessarily repeated test." End quote. There are three ways in which practice reminders can be used as clinical decision support. They can guide the clinician to provide the recommended treatment. They can critique the clinician's course of action by comparing it against guideline recommendations, and they can help with patient follow-up. There are a number of known challenges to incorporating clinical practice guidelines into clinical decision support systems. These challenges were identified more than 10 years ago and are still applicable today. First, reminders can be false alarms, given as a result of an incorrectly implemented guideline. 
Next, reminders can be false due to the fact that the guideline is not specific enough to address the particular patient's condition. For example, a guideline may not specify exceptions, so a patient who falls within the exception may have the guideline inappropriately applied. Third, the patient data in the EHR can be incomplete or inconsistent, resulting in the reminder either firing inappropriately or not firing at all. Fourth, the actions that the reminder generates may not be clinically appropriate for the particular patient. And finally, the reminder itself may generate risk to the patient. Decision support can also be used to provide administrative reminders, such as use of suggested coded problems for particular patient populations, to support billing and specific guidance on documentation to support collection of quality improvement indicator data. This concludes Lecture B of Decision Support for Quality Improvement. In summary, alerts and reminders have the potential to improve patient safety. Types including drug and lab test alerts, practice reminders, and administrative reminders. Alerts and reminders also have the potential to compromise patient safety. Nuisance alerts provide little perceived benefit to the prescriber at the time of the alert and can cause frustration and alert fatigue, which in turn can result in medical error. Successful alerts are specific, sensitive, clear, concise, and support clinical workflow and efficiency.